to, to Shri Rajesh Bhushan sir, Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. I would request Dr. Shilpi Madam to present the bouquet to Professor Dr. Atul Goel sir, Director General of Health Services. I would like to request Dr. Ram Mohan sir to present the bouquet to Dr. Raja Sabhapati sir, Director, Ganga Hospital, Coimbatore, past president of APSI. I would request Dr. Suman sir to present the bouquet to Dr. Ahuja sir, Senior Consultant, Sir Gangaram Hospital and past president of APSI. I would request Dr. Mukesh sir to present the bouquet to Dr. Rakesh Khazanji sir, Director, Department of Plastic Surgery, Medanta Hospital, Gurugram and past president of APSI. I would request Dr. M.K. Jha sir to present the bouquet to Dr. Nitin Mokal sir, President-elect of APSI, Honorary Professor Sir J.J. Group of Hospitals, Mumbai. I would like to request Dr. Sameek sir to conduct today's program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We can have the landing slide now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are very fortunate to have uh, Sri Rajesh Bhushanji, the Secretary, uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Our Director General Health Services, Professor Atul Goel. Mr. Rishi Rajji, retired IP officer, DGP, Police, Kerala Police. Raja Sabhapati sir, Ahuja sir, Dr. Khazanji, Dr. Mokal as uh, our uh, eminent guests in the, uh, in, on Plastic Surgery Day. I request uh, Dr. Ravi Mahajan, President APSI, to come on dais and present the welcome address. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So, Chief Guest of the Day, Shri Rajesh Bhujanji, IS, Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Today's Guest of Honor, Professor Atul Goel, who is Director General of Health Services, and our very special Guest of the Day today, Shri Rishi Raj Singh Ji, IPS, ex DGP, Government of Kerala, Dr. Rajiv Ahuja past president of APSI and executive trustee of APSI, Dr. Akesh Khazanchi, immediate past president APSI, Dr. Raja Sabapati, past president of APSI, Dr. Nitin Mukul, president-elect of APSI, Dr. Vijay Kumar, secretary APSI, Dr. Sameek Bhattacharya, who is our trainer and is also the main organizer of today's program. So members of the Delhi chapter of APSI and members of CSOI. So I welcome you all for today's function on behalf of the Association of Plastic Surgeons of India. So today's function is actually in relation to the film festival which was done yesterday at AIMS on the occasion of uh, the Plastic Surgery Day. So what is, what is the significance of the Plastic Surgery Day? In fact, uh, the uh, concept was conceptualized by Dr. Raja Sabhapati, who is our past president in 2011 and the mandate was that all the plastic surgeons in different parts of the country they should you know organize awareness programs in the form of seminars symposia cmes and the various uh, other programs you know to create awareness amongst the public so why this need uh, was felt so the need was felt because plastic surgery is a very peculiar kind of a specialty you see, if we talk of cardiac surgery, neurosurgery, gastrosurgery, the name itself indicates that what kind of a ailments they are dealing with. But when it comes to plastic surgery, 
people have a lot of myths about it and many think that plastic surgery is only about beautif beautification or it is only about cosmetic surgery. And then many will think that uh, some kind of a plastic is used in plastic surgery, which is not the case. So in order to educate the people and also the policy makers, so this was thought of that we must, you know, try to uh, create awareness about the various aspects of plastic surgery. There is no doubt that the cosmetic surgery is a very important part of the plastic surgery, but that is a very small part because plastic surgery pertains to a lot of other things like management of the birth defects, accident cases, burns cases, post-burn deformities, cancer reconstruction, management of uh, the wounds which do not heal with the uh, easily like chronic wounds and diabetics, venous ulcers and so many things, you know. And particularly in trauma, the plastic surgeons have a very, very important role. Limb trauma, for example, hand surgery, you know, people come with amputated hands, amputated fingers, thumb. So they can all be united, put back, replanted by the plastic surgeons, you know, if the uh, part is brought to them at the right time. Similarly, a lot of, you know, maxillofacial trauma, which is very severe and also the limb injuries which are beyond any repair so they can be restored back by the use of plastic and microvascular surgery. So in order to educate the people about that, so we have been doing that since 2011. But this year we felt the need that this kind of a program needs to be done at the national level so that we can, you know, have a wider coverage and, uh, you know, we are able to reach the corridors of power in Delhi also and then tell them that what plastic surgery is all about. And with this thing in mind, so a film festival was organized yesterday where we have asked the plastic surgeons from different parts of the country to make movies on the theme uh, Changing Lives with Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. And we got 120 entries from different parts of the country where, you know, we, they showcased the cases of burns, trauma, cancer and so many other ailments where the lives of the people have been totally transformed and it is much beyond than you know just doing a beautification surgery or cosmetic surgery. And then uh, we had selected you know the movies which was as per guidelines and they were sent to the uh, National Film Institute at Pune and they selected 25 movies which were screened yesterday and then uh, three award winning movies which will be shown today. So they were uh, selected and three special mention movies were also selected. And that will just showcase that how plastic surgery can really transform the life of the patients. So since we have uh, uh, our uh, health secretary today here with us, with us, so I would like to, you know, I'm sure the government is, of India is doing a lot of work but I would like to, you know, make an appeal uh, that uh, as far as plastic surgery is concerned, it should be an integral part of all the trauma centers in the country. Because plastic surgeons have a very, very important role to play as far as the trauma is concerned. Particularly, you know, the replantation of the amputated parts, hand injuries, facial injuries, you know, which are very bad injuries. So they can all be restored to near normal, you know, if they are given a proper treatment at the right time. And there is a lack of uh, specialists, particularly in the peripheral areas. So we may have very good facilities in the hospitals in Delhi. Like uh, yesterday I was at Ames. Ames has very good facilities. Similarly, you know, many of the Delhi hospitals may have very good plastic surgery departments. But if you go to the periphery, for example, I come from Amritsar. You know, there is a medical college there where I joined in 78 and there was a one plastic surgeon at that time and today after so many years, you know, almost after 45 years, there is again today only one plastic surgeon who is posted. And you cannot expect one plastic surgeon to provide emergency services 24 hours into 365. So it is almost impossible. So what I feel is that uh, the medical colleges in districts and the civil hospitals should have plastic surgeons a team of plastic surgeons so that 24 by 7 emergency services are made available to the patients because they don't have to deal only with the uh, trauma, they have to deal with burns, post-burn uh, post deformities, birth defects, cancer reconstruction. Earlier, 
cancer surgeon will just remove the part and the patients will live with those disabilities throughout their life. Today, with plastic and microvascular surgery, we are able to restore them to near normal. So many of the hospitals are doing that kind of a work in Delhi, but I think it is uh, our duty, you know, as the association as well as of the government that these kind of facilities should be made available in the periphery also, so that the people at large, they are able to get all these kind of services uh, of this kind. So with the, these words, I welcome you all again on behalf of Association of Plastic Surgeons of India. And we have uh, uh, very eminent speakers today with us, Dr. Raja Savapati, Dr. Rajiv Huja, Dr. Khazanchi, and Dr. Nitin Mukul, who are very experienced and I'm sure they will be able to answer some of the queries also from the people. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mahajan, sir. Now we will be showing the three best movies of Shushruta, APSI Shushruta Film Festival. We will come with the second runner-up or the third position, which has been won by, we can have the slide on this, which has been won by Ganga Hospital, led by none other, other than Dr. S. Raja Sabapati. It is an amazing story of a burn victim, with the help of plastic surgery, he could become an entrepreneur. So let's see the movie. தெரியாமச்சுட்டேன் <laughs> <laughs> பாத்துக்கலாம் அப்புறம் அப்பாவும் இல்லை அப்பா இறந்து ஒரு ஆறு மாதத்துக்குள்ளே அந்த ஆக்சிடென்ட் ஆகிருக்கு தண்ணி குடிக்கிறனால அம்மாவை தான் கூப்பிட வேண்டியதாக இருக்குது தங்கள் வேறலாம் பின்னால் இருக்குது தண்ணி எடுக்க முடியல யூரின் போனாலும் சரி நம்ம தூ பாத்ரூம் போனாலும் ஒரு ஆள் போகணும் ப்ரஷ் பண்ணுறது தலை செய்வது ஆக்டிவாக அவ்வளோ வேலை செஞ்சுட்டு டக்குன்னு ஷடனாக அவர் படுத்து படுக்க ஆகும்போது ஒன்றுமே மெ மென்டல் வைஸ் ரொம்ப இதாகிடுச்சு எனக்கு சாப்பிட்றது ஊட்டி விட்றதுல இருந்துங்க குளிக்கி வைக்கிறதுல இருந்து நாம் தான் குளிக்க வைக்கணுங்க ட்ரெஸ்ஸே நாம் தான் மாற்றி அனுங்க கை குழந்தை பார்த்துக்கிற மாதிரி கூட ஏதாவது இருந்தாக வேண்டிய சூழ்நிலை ஜஸ்ட் இமேஜின் ஃபார் அ மேன் ஆஃப் ட்வெண்ட்டி செவன் இஃப் த மதர் ஹேஸ் டு டூ இட் ஆல் த டைம் தேர் சோல் டேக்ஸ் இட் பீட்டிங் அண்ட் தே ஃபீல் திஸ் இஸ் கோயிங் டு வித் ஆல் த ரெஸ்ட் ஆஃப் இஸ் லைஃப் இஸ் இட் வர்த் லிவிங் அட் ஆல் ஒரு நடப்பணமாக இருக்கிற மாதிரி தான் இருக்குன்னு வச்சு ஒன்று ஒரு யூஸ்லெஸ் ஃபிலோவாக தான் நடப்பணமாக தான் இருக்கிற மாதிரி தான் இருந்துச்சு என்ன பண்ணுறது ஒன்றும் புரியல அதாவது ஒரு சூசைட் பண்ணிக்கலாம்னு நினச்சா கூட யாராவது ஹெல்ப் பண்ணதாக சூசைட் பண்ணவே முடியும் அந்த மாதிரி சுச்சுவேஷனில் ஏண்டா வாழ்கிறோம் ரொம்ப நரக வேர்னையாக தான் இருந்தது ஒரு ஆறு மாதம் எனக்கு பையனை பார்த்தாவே நான் பையனை இழந்துருவோமோ இப்படி வளர்த்து நம்ம பையனை இழந்துருமா கொஸ்டின் அழுகாட்சியாகவே வந்துட்டு இருக்குங்க இப்படி இருக்கானே பையன் எப்படி நல்ல நிலைமைக்கு வருவானா இல்லை இப்படியே இது பண்ணிடுவாங்கட்டு கடவுளை சாமி வேண்டிக்கிட்டே இருப்பாங்க He is almost a cripple in the form of hand burns. The hands were more severely burned. To correct a person who has got such severe deformities like Kadirway, it requires eight to nine stages of surgery. We first operated on his left hand and then we did the other hand. 
ஃபிசியோ தெரப்பி பண்ணிகிட்டு இருக்கும்போது கொஞ்சம் கொஞ்சம் லைட்டாக ஃபிங்கர்லாம் அந்த ஒர்க்கிங் பண்ணும் போது தான் நமக்கு கொஞ்சம் ஒரு நம்பிக்கை வருது அப்புறம் ஒவ்வொரு வேலை செய்து பார்க்க சொன்னாங்க அப்போ ஃபஸ்ட்டு தண்ணி தான் டம்ளர் எடுத்து தண்ணி குடிக்கும் போது தான் நமக்கு கொஞ்சம் நம்பிக்கை வந்துச்சு அப்புறம் ஃபஸ்ட்டுங்க சாப்பாடு பாத்திரத்துலேருந்து எடுத்து போட்டு மூணு போட்டு சாப்பிட்டுக்கிறாங்க எனக்கு உடனே ஒரு கொஞ்சம் அப்படியே ஒரு இதாட்டம் ஆகிட்டுங்க the success in any hand burns including what kadirvel had is the patient did may be able to eat on his own that is the first thing which patients really appreciate after treatment of any hand burn second thing is using for the toilet bathroom ponal naane toilet clean panni vandruven ipo naane palvala kida டீ வைக்கிறதுலாம் கொஞ்சம் அப்படி பழகிடுச்சு சார் நானே டீ வச்சிருது சாப்பிட்றது அடுத்தவங்களுக்கு இப்போ எதுவும் பண்ணுறது இல்லை நானே சாப்பிட்ருவேன் ஸ்பூன் போட்டு சாப்பிடுவேன் அப்புறம் அம்மா சேலை அரசு போடுறது நானே அரசு போட்டுருவேன் அதனால் அம்மாவுக்கு ரொம்ப சந்தோஷம் தான் எனக்கு பார்க்க ஆரம்பிச்சிட்டாங்க அவனுக்கு நான் எப்படி பார்த்தனா அவன் எனக்கு பார்க்க ஆரம்பிச்சிட்டாங்க எனக்கு குழந்த மாதிரி பார்க்குறாங்க நீ பீங் யங் தி ஆல்வேஸ் வாண்ட் டு கோ ஒர்க் அண்ட் பிகம் இண்டிபெண்ட் கதிர்வேல் ஆக்சுவலி வென் பேக் அண்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் ஐ கன்சர்ன் இம்சர் வி பிகம் அண்ட் என்டர்பிரனர் சரி அண்ணன் தான் இருந்துட்டு சரி சும்மா இருக்கிற நேரம் ஏதோ ஒரு மூணு மிஷின் மட்டும் போட்டு ஒரு பாவாடை கம்பெனி மாதிரி செய்யணும் அப்படி ஃபீஸ் கட்டிங் போட்டு டெய்லர் கிடைத்து கொடுத்துருவேன் வண்டி ஓட்ட ஸ்டார்டிங் ஓட்ட முடியல இருந்தாலும் நான் அப்படி விட்டுறக்கூடாது ஓட்டி பார்க்கணும்னு ஓட்டி ஓட்டி பழகி இப்போ ஓட்டுறானு வண்டி ஓட்டி பழகுறதுனால பில் கொண்டு ஃபீஸ் கொடுக்குறது எடுத்துகிட்டு வரது சொல்கிற நேரம் எல்லா வேலையும் செஞ்சுட்டு தம்பி யார் பார்த்துக்குவாங்க அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு கவலை இருந்துக்கிட்டே இருந்தது எனக்கு மனசுக்குள்ளே இப்போ அந்த கவலை இல்லைன்னு எனக்கு அவனை பற்றி அதை பண்ண கவலையே பண்ணுறது இல்லைங்கப்பா எங்கே வேணாலும் பிழைச்சிக்குவான் மறுஜென்மம் எடுத்த மாதிரி தான் இருக்குது எனக்கு கண்டிப்பாக ஒரு புது மனுஷனாக தான் எனக்கு தோணுது நம்ம அடுத்தவங்களுக்கு வந்து பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு எடுத்துக்காட்டாக தான் இருக்கணும் நம்ம பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ரெண்டு பேர் இதே மாதிரி இதானவங்க வாழ்க்கையில் உக்காந்துடக்கூடாது மறுபடியும் நம்மளை பார்த்து ஒரு எடுத்துக்காட்டாக தான் இருக்கணுங்கிறதுக்காகவே செய்ய முடியாது நினைக்கிற வழி கஷ்டப்பட்டு செஞ்சு பார்க்கணும் தான் நினைப்பேன் that was an amazing story and the second prize is another landmark marking another landmark of plastic surgery in india the first hand transplant how it transformed life of manu the operation was done in amrita hospital led by dr subramanyam ayer past president of apsi let's see this transforming movie man alone has a hand he uses it as a tool as a symbol and as a weapon as an organ of performance it serves as eyes for the blind the mute talk with it and it has become a symbol of salutation and prayer human hands are valuable as signatures because they cannot be altered or forged and its intricate patterns differ from finger to finger and from individual to individual thus loss of hands is a form of loss of identity this is a historic tale of a man who regained his identity and his will to live rising from despair to hope this is the story of manu manu was just like any 27 year old with eyes full of dreams and a heart full of hope he had a comfortable home and a family that loved and supported him in all his endeavors Manu decided to visit the Sri Mukambika temple in Mangalore He boarded the train at Ednakulam not knowing that this journey would be the ultimate test of faith and perseverance a journey that would transform his life As he stood by the door of a crowded compartment He witnessed a group of hooligans harassing a young couple. Unable to bear their plight, he stepped up and asked them to stop. Later, the hooligans cornered him and threw him out of the train. Pinnid, I was in a hurry. I was in a Trishur Medical College Hospital. I was in a hurry. 
കൈകൾ വലിയ ബാൻഡേജ് വെച്ച് കവർ ചെയ്തിരിക്കുകയും വേണം ആ സമയത്ത് എൻ്റെ ഒരു കൂട്ടുകാരനോട് ഞാൻ ചോദിച്ചു എന്തുവാടാ എൻ്റെ കൈകൾക്ക് പറ്റിയത് അവൻ അന്നേരം ഒന്നും വിടുതിരിഞ്ഞ് കരഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ട് പോയി എനിക്ക് ഇവൻ എന്തിനാണ് കരയുന്നതെന്നും അപ്പോൾ എനിക്ക് മനസ്സിലായില്ല കുറച്ച് സമയത്തിന് ശേഷം ഡോക്ടർ വന്ന് ഡ്രസ്സ് ചെയ്യാൻ മേജുകൾ അഴിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ എൻ്റെ കയ്യിൽ ഇരു കൈപ്പത്തികളും ഇല്ലായിരുന്നു അത് വളരെ ഒരു നടുക്കത്തോടും വളരെ വേദനയോടും കൂടി ഞാൻ ചിരിച്ചറിഞ്ഞു എൻ്റെ ജീവിതം നഷ്ടപ്പെട്ട കാര്യം The accident dealt a devastating blow to Manu and his family. He turned into a recluse. The once outgoing and eager 27-year-old was now left homebound and dependent on others for the simplest of things. കൈകൾ നഷ്ടപ്പെട്ടത് എൻ്റെ ജീവിതത്തിനെ വളരെ അധികം ഉലച്ചുകളാണ് എൻ്റെ വീട്ടുകാരും കൂട്ടുകാരും എന്നോട് വളരെ സ്നേഹത്തോട് പെരുമാറുകയും എൻ്റെ ആവശ്യങ്ങളെല്ലാം നിറവേറ്റി തരികയും ചെയ്തിരുന്നാലും ചെറിയ ചെറിയ കാര്യങ്ങളായ ബാത്റൂമിൽ പോവുക ഭക്ഷണം കഴിക്കുക എന്നിവയ്ക്ക് പോലും മറ്റുള്ളവരെ ആശ്രയിക്കേണ്ടി വരുന്നത് എന്നെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം വളരെ വിഷമം ഉണ്ടായിക്കൊണ്ടിരുന്നു ആ സമയത്ത് മറ്റുള്ളവർ എന്നോട് കാണിക്കുന്ന സഹതാപം പോലും എനിക്ക് വളരെ ദുസ്സഹമായിട്ടുണ്ട് ഈ രീതിയിൽ എൻ്റെ ജീവിതം മുന്നോട്ട് കൊണ്ടുപോകണോ അതെയോ ആത്മഹത്യയോ അതായിരുന്നു എൻ്റെ മുന്നിലുള്ള ചോദ്യം But destiny had other plans. His younger brother Shanu heard about the hand transplant program being set up at the Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences during a TV interview of the lead surgeon Dr. Subramanya Iyer. He brought Manu to the hospital to meet with Dr. Iyer and discuss the possibility of a bilateral hand transplant. After several rounds of discussions, Manu was finally listed in the registry for the Kerala network of organ sharing. once the decision of the transplant was made we had to start our preparations lot of departments were involved and we had to build up a huge team of more than 30 doctors and the departments included hand and microsurgery orthopedic surgery anesthesia we needed to have immunology support as well as support from the transplant nursing and icu care all this was made and then we had several meetings among ourselves to chalk out the program along with this manu and his family had intensive counseling sessions they were told about the procedure they were explained about the need of taking medications uh, throughout his life then the requirement of manu to intensively do physiotherapy during at least for one year after the transplant even though all this preparations had been made the greatest hurdle was the availability of a suitable donor with a suitable hands for money the wait was finally over when the family of a brain dead road traffic accident victim made the bold and noble gesture of agreeing to donate their son binoy's hands to manu tests to check the viability of the organ were conducted and it was declared a good match the 16 hour surgery was a daunting task we divided it into four teams two teams were designated to procure hands from the donor and two teams were there to prepare manu's hands for the transplant this was actually a race against time as we had to reestablish the blood supply at the earliest and at the same time in each hand connect around 35 structures independently to make it functional one of the greatest team efforts in the annals of indian surgery resulted in victory with manu drinking a glass of of water with his own hands a feat that he thanked binoy for over the next 12 months manu with the tireless support of his team of physiotherapists had to retrain himself to perform everyday tasks such as eating handling objects and the like which 
With slow yet steady effort, Manu could do things he had not done in two years. Manu found himself filled with a renewed vigor to help others through what he has. His dedication to his hand rehabilitation training enabled him to be employed as a transplant counseling assistant at the same department in the Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences. Manu's transformation would not have been possible without Binoy. Binoy's hands were gifted hands that created exquisite. They were hands that served and cared for his bedridden father for 12 years. And now, through the gift of organ donation, Binoy. So this was marriage of technology, uh, knowledge and humanity. Transplant is all about that. The first prize of this film festival goes to Dr. Parag Shahashrabhude. This is another example that technology and the art of plastic surgery can transform somebody's life. But it also embodies another aspect in this movie the grit and perseverance of a patient who is facing a, almost a fatal illness to strike back and hit life with uh, renewed vigor. Let's see the story of Mahesh Patil. माझ्या आयुष्यात असा एक टप्पा येऊन पोचला होता की तिथं माझं सगळं आयुष्य थांबलं होतं ज्या वेळेला महेश बारा वर्षाचा होता त्याला कॅन्सर असा आजार झाला मी डॉक्टरांनी दाखवलं जयशिंगपूरला मिरजला तर तिने म्हणजे असं व्हायचं इथे काय चान्सेस नाही मग आम्ही आमचा धीर सुटला सगळा जेव्हा मला असं समजलं की माझा पाय काढण्यात येणार आहे तेव्हा मला असं वाटलं की माझ्या जगण्याला काय अर्थ नाही आहे पुण्यामध्ये आम्हाला म दिनानाथ मंगेशकर हॉस्पिटलमध्ये डॉक्टर शस्त्रबुद्धे आणि पंचबाग सर यांच्या मार्गदर्शनाखाली माझं प्लॅस्टिक सर्जरी केली महेश जेव्हा आमच्याकडं पहिल्यांदा आला आणि तो चालताना लंगडत होता त्यामुळे त्याला पायाचा एक्सरे करायला सांगितला एक्सरे केल्यावरती असं लक्षात आलं की पायाचं जे हाड आहे त्याला मोठी कॅन्सर सदृश ग्रोथ आहे मग त्याची बायोपसी घेतली आणि तो कॅन्सर आहे हे प्रूव्ह झालं आणि हे अत्यंत रेअर प्रकारचा हा कॅन्सर आहे अशा केसेसमध्ये बऱ्याचशा वेळाला पायाचं ॲम्पुटेशन म्हणजे पायाच काढून टाकावं लागतं डॉक्टर शस्त्रबुद्धे यांनी असे आश्वासन दिले की आप तुमच्या मुलग्याचा पाय काढावा लागणार नाही आपण त्या पायाची प्लॅस्टिक सर्जरी करून तो पाय वाचवूया तर आम्ही त्यांना समजावून सांगलं की नवीन तंत्रज्ञान आहे आपण मायक्रोसर्जरी प्लॅस्टिक सर्जरी ही करू शकतो आणि त्याचा पाय वाचवायचा प्रयत्न करू शकतो आमच्या डिस्कशनमध्ये असं ठरलं की जेवढा कॅन्सरचा भाग आहे तेवढा आपण ते हार्ड आणि आजूबाजूचा कॅन्सर जो आहे तो संपूर्ण काढून टाकू आणि दुसऱ्या पायामधनं फिब्युला नावाचं जे बोन असतं छोटं बोन असतं ते आपण काढू आणि ती बोनमधली गॅप जी आहे ती ब्रिज करू आणि त्याचा पाय वाचण्याचा प्रयत्न करूया असं आम्ही सगळं पेशंटना महेशला आणि नातेवाईकांनासुद्धा सगळं समजावून सांगितलं महेशच्या बाबतीमध्ये एक सुदैवाची गोष्ट अशी घडली होती की त्याच्या सांध्यापर्यंत तो आजार पोचलेला नव्हता गुडघ्याच्या हे ऑपरेशन खूप कॉम्प्लिकेटेड होतं आठ तास चाललेल्या या सर्जरीमध्ये पायाच्या मांडीचा कॅन्सर असलेला भाग हा काढून टाकण्यात आला त्यामधील मांडीचे हाड ऑपरेशन चालू असतानाच रेडिएशन देऊन कॅन्सर फ्री केलं गेलं त्याचवेळी दुसऱ्या पायामधून फ्युबिला हे बोन त्याच्या रक्तवाहिन्यांबरोबर मायक्रोसर्जरी टेक्निकचा वापर करून काढण्यात आलं 
रेडिएशन नंतर कॅन्सर फ्री झालेलं बोन ह्याच्यामध्ये एक स्लॉट तयार करण्यात आला आणि त्याच्यामध्ये फ्युबुला बोन बसवण्यात आलं व ही दोन्ही बोन्स परत ओरिजिनल मांडीच्या बोन गॅपमध्ये प्लेट आणि स्क्रूच्या साह्याने फिक्स केली गेली बोन फिक्स केल्यानंतर फ्युबुला बोनच्या रक्तवाहिन्या पायामधील मूळ रक्तवाहिन्यांबरोबर मायक्रोस्कोपचा वापर करून जोडण्यात आला त्यामुळे हाड लवकर जुळून येण्यास मदत झाली अशा पद्धतीने या गुंतागुंतीच्या कॅन्सरमध्ये तंत्रज्ञान आणि प्लॅस्टिक सर्जरीचा वापर करून आपल्याला पाय वाचवण्यात यश आलं आमच्या सॅटिस्फॅक्शन मी ऑपरेशन झालं त्या सर्जरीनंतर मी वाकर घेऊन चालायला लागलो नंतर जसं जसं मग काठी घेऊन चालू पण मला व्यायामाची आवड निर्माण झाली मी व्यायाम जसं जसं करत गेलो ती काठीसुद्धा बंद झाली त्यानंतर मी चालायला लागलो फिरायला लागलो गाडी आणायला लागलो स्विमिंग करायला लागलो सायकल चालवायला लागलो व्यायाम करायला लागलो व्यायाम करत करत अशी आवड निर्माण झाली की बॉडी बिल्डिंग क्षेत्रात उतरलो मला आजही आठवतं माही ज्या वेळा पहिला माझ्याकडं आला होता जिमसाठी ॲडमिशनसाठी त्याची जी जिद्द होती ती खूप मोठी होती शिवसंग आमचे मोठे बंधू यांनी त्याच्यावर खूप मोठा विश्वास टाकला मी खूप वेळा त्याला सपोर्ट केलं ज्या वेळा तो थाईस फर्स्ट टाईम मागे घेत होता थाईससाठी मांड्याचा जो व्यायाम चालू झाला त्यावेळेला त्याच्या पायातला जो गॅप होता तो बघण्यासाठी आम्ही त्याला पायाखाली लाकडाचा ठोकळा दिला त्यावेळी त्याचे खूप बॅलन्स जायचे त्यावर छोटे छोटे पहिले वेट गाठले जवळजवळ दहा वर्षानंतर अचानक मला न्यूजपेपरमध्ये त्याची बातमी दिसली की त्यानं बॉडी बिल्डिंग कॉम्पिटिशनमध्ये भाग घेतलेला आहे दिव्यांगांची जी बॉडी बिल्डिंग कॉम्पिटिशन असते आणि त्याला महाराष्ट्र श्री दोन हजार बावीस त्यानं जिंकलेली आहे त्यामुळे मी तडक गाडी काढली आणि त्याला भेटायला त्याच्या गावी शिराळा जयसिंगपूर इथं गेलो आणि त्याची भेट घेतली त्याचं अभिनंदन केलं कारण आम्हाला खूप छान वाटलं की आम्ही जे ऑपरेशन करून त्याचा पाय वाचवला त्याचं त्यानं चीज केलं म्हणजे काहीतरी त्याच्यात पुढं जाऊन त्यानं बॉडी बिल्डिंग केलं काहीतरी आयुष्यात त्यानं करून दाखवलं कारण हा खूप रेअर प्रकारचा कॅन्सर आहे याच्यामध्ये सक्सेस आणि सर्वायवलसुद्धा आपण म्हणू कारण मेटास्टेसिस होण्याचे चान्सेस असतात आणि सर्वायवलचे चान्सेससुद्धा फक्त पन्नास टक्केच असतात तर अशा अवघड परिस्थितीवर मात करून त्यानं हे सगळं यश मिळवलं याच्याकरता आम्हाला पण खूप मला आणि डॉक्टर पंचावगांना खूप आनंद झाला आज महाराष्ट्र सी इथे गोल्ड मेडल घेतलं आहे आणि पोंडिचेरी इथे झालेल्या भारतश्री इथे मला सेकंड प्लेस मिळाला आहे आणि माझी अशी इच्छा आहे आणि माझी जिद्द आहे की मी भारतासाठी इंटरनॅशनल इथे जाऊन की भारतासाठी मेडल आणावं प्लॅस्टिक सर्जरी झाली त्यानंतर माझ्या जगण्याला अर्थ मिळाला आणि माझं आयुष्यच बदलून गेलं महेशसारख्या अनेक पेशंटचे हात किंवा पाय जे काढावे लागणार होते ते वाचवले गेले आहे हे सगळं शक्य आहे केवळ प्लास्टिक सर्जरीमुळे With this, we come to the end of the first part of the event, that is screening of the three award-winning movies. Before we go to the public lecture part, I want to take you down to the history line, which you are very proud of. India is one of those countries which has a surgical legacy dating back to 600 BC. It's unique. And we plastic surgeons are extremely proud about this surgical heritage. The history of plastic surgery in India dates back to nearly 4,000 years. It is believed that Atharva Veda, chastised by Brahma, is the root of Ayurveda. Brahma imparted it to Daksha Prajapati, Daksha Prajapati taught Ashwini Kumar. Lord Indra learned it from them and imparted this knowledge to rishis like Bharadwaja and Lord Dhanvantari. Charaka Samhita and Sushruta Samhita are the two treatises of Ayurveda. 
Shushutva wrote this treatise approximately 600 BC based on the lectures of his teacher, the Surgeon King Devadas, the incarnation of Dhanvantari, the divine physician. Shushruta Samhita is an amazing and immense text. Contains 184 chapters, description of 1120 illnesses, 300 surgical procedures, classification of human surgery in 8 categories, over 120 surgical instruments and around 700 drugs from different sources like animal, plants and mineral. Shushruta was one of the earliest exponent of surgery and embodied art and science. Shushruta's principal and teaching took surgery in ancient India to a noteworthy pedestal, making it the golden age of surgery in the world. Shushruta has been rightly called the father of plastic surgery. He had developed the concept of planning in reverse. He used to map out the defect first, put the defect, put the map and pattern of the defect in the recipient site from the skin is taken and he used to plan like this. And his legacy continued. In 4th century, another scholar named Vagabat wrote Ashtanga Sanghata and Ashtanga Ridanas. He described nose reconstruction, credited the procedure to Maharshi Attareya. He emphasized the need for the inner skin while constructing nose. Shushruta originally had described nose reconstruction from the cheek skin. Attareya also propounded it later. Such intricate surgical details. With sands of time, cheek nose reconstruction described by Shushruta and Vagabata got modified. Leave it on. Uh, got modified and forehead skin came into vogue. How this forehead skin modification of the original nasal reconstruction technique, it cannot be traced to any personality. But it underscores this point that at that time there was lot of churning of surgical knowledge which led to fine tuning and standardization of procedure. And this use of forehead skin for nasal reconstruction is rightfully called the Indian method of nose reconstruction is recognized world over and this was practiced for centuries in our country. But unfortunately this golden era of surgery began a gradual decline. With the sands of time, scriptures like Mahavaga, Jataka and Manusmriti enjoined strict prohibition on surgical techniques because uh, touching of blood and pus was considered polluting. And this surgical skill was relegated to professionals like Kumars or Potters who are known for their manual dexterity. They kept this wonderful science alive for centuries and the Indian surgical legacy rested on them and they passed into from father to son in family legacy and family secrets. Some of these families were later identified during the British time. James Finley and Thomas Crusoe, surgeons in the British residency in Pune, witnessed the operation of a patient named Koazji with cut nose and they reported into Madras Gazette. It was later published in the Gentleman magazine in London in 1794 as letter to the editor. This proved to be the watershed moment in the history of plastic surgery. The letter appeared in the heading Curious Chirurgical Operation, gave a brief account of the nasal reconstructive surgery and the letter introduced the Indian method of nose reconstruction using forehead flap to Europe and which quickly caught on in the West. These meta methods soon found their way in Britain and the first nose job by Indian method was done in 22nd October in 1814 by jo Joseph Kapiu. This came to be known as the Hindu method at that time and method described by the great sage Shushruta traveled to Europe through Indian and Arab traders and Buddhists. Even during the 8th century, texts were translated to Arabic and that treatise was called Kitab Shashul Hind and it was presented to the Khalif Harun, Harun al-Rashid in Baghdad. There was also historical reference that court of King Yashu Varman of Cambodia also had a copy of Shushruta Samhita in his language. Later in a source book of plastic surgery authored by Frank McDowell aptly describes Shushruta in recent time. 
Through all Shushruta's flowery language, incant incantations and irrelevance, there shines the unmistakable picture of a great surgeon. Undoubted by his failures, unimpressed by his successes, he sought truth unceasingly and passed it on those who followed. He attacked disease and deformity definitively with resourced and logical methods. When path did not exist, he made one. At the end, I'll just recite lines which I have penned on this day, for this day. We are the hope for many when options are hardly any. We move to salvage and it's war we wage when the complex defects and difficult cases. We bring smile to families when the child is born with fallacies. We make the ordinary face pretty and give the right curves to the body. We are savior to the devastated, be it burns, trauma or amputated. Proud to be of Sushruta's lineage. In India, plastic surgery was there for ages. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. With this, we can always say that from the Sushruta's lineage we are. Now coming to the next lecture. What we do in life echoes for eternity. That's what Russell Crowe said in Gladiator. Dr. Raja Savapati, the doyen of hand surgery, established Ganga Hospital in Coimbatore, which is recognized world over as the mecca of hand surgery. Today, Ganga Hospital, Ganga clones are there all. Care, I think we could be told as uh, media not formatted, formatting. These eras, you know, last breath after button, if okay. Going to convince breath doctor candles. The first is the era of uh, life preservation. Time out candle. And that we crossed over when we invented antibiotics, blood transfusions, triage, and ambulances. And for the next three, the era of you know, limb preservation, the era of you know, functional restoration, and for Easter acceptance, I think. Plastic surgery has a great role to play. 
The, as far as the limb preservation is concerned, I think what really made a big change was the microsurgery because the marvel of modern surgery. What we plastic surgeons did, apart from other people who has used the microscope is that, we learned the art of you know, suturing small blood vessels as small as one millimeter in diameter. And that opened up a lot of possibilities it opened up. Because if an amp thumb gets amputated, and the vessel in the thumb is only about you know, one millimeter. Previously they were going to the dustbin, now they could go back to the hand to thumb. And the technology also helped us. Here I am putting the needles on the side on the wall of my, our thumb. That's the normal needle and the last one that you find is the needle with which you know, with which you operate. And that allows us to do these things. This is what now microsurgery has achieved. This is the right hand of a young boy who has lost his thumb and the thumb has been put back. It is hard to realize you know, which is the thumb you know, which has been put back. And this doesn't happen only one finger. Suppose if a tragedy struck in and then all the fingers have been lost. I think with the 17 hour operation now we are able to put back all the fingers and that's the picture you know, five, five years later is back in the same job. But what India did <coughs> was that we pushed the boundaries. I think we pushed the boundaries and what people said is not possible. We extend the boundaries of reconstruction. So here is a lady who I think by any sense of imagination most of the time it will go for above elbow amputation. That's what it would have gone. But then what we did was we followed certain principles. We devised some technological processes and then we put back the hand and that's the lady who has got the hand back again. And you see f four years later this child, this lady comes to us after a marriage has the child and if you see the left hand what she, we reconstructed she holds the knife or the, she holds the carrot or she holds the tomato and if you could see she could build a, she could lift up a whole uh, a bag with, with which has got a full of no water and more importantly it's not that we rejoined only amputated parts but then more important I think this is what you know, we do in day in and day out you know, plasticines do Plastic science had a great role in the management of crush injuries with fractures. As the science evolved, I think orthopedics evolved faster. That means when the, when the lorry or something runs over, it doesn't selectively run over only the bone or fracture of the bone. In addition to that, a lot of soft tissue. We had a capacity to fix the fractures, put in a plate, put in a nail and all that. But how do we bridge the gap, bridge the gap in the soft tissues? That was the one, you know, which is leading for amputation, there's one you know, leading for infection. He's a, but this is the limb of a computer engineer who had his both the legs injured and he also had a big bone gap. And then 18 months of follow-up, you know, we find you know, that he started walking and then he resumed his normal activities. But then the height of our achievement, you know, what he said, what he said was he sent this and a, a note he said, but for you, this moment would not have been possible, sir. The but for plastic surgery, it is not a possible, and then uh, life goes on. This is happening, you know, day in and day out. You know, the plastic surgeons do. Whereas, that's in the lo uh, lower limb, in the upper limb, you know, we still do not have a satisfactory process. I am sure you know, all of you would have read so many stories of people you know, climbing the Mount Everest with uh, uh, process on both the legs. Uh, but then, have you, ever, have you ever shaken hands with a person who has got an artificial hand? Never. Still, you know, the process technology has not you know, come up to that level. So, saving the upper limb it becomes you know, much more important and reconstructed surgeons you know, play a role. That's the hand of a small girl. It's just the hand is attached only by a vessel and a nerve and then there's a big gap there. We have to build up the tissues, we have to build up the framework, we have to bridge up the gap and then we take it from the tissues from the back and then uh, there's a big gap to be filled. Almost like the film what you know, Sir they told the thing, we put in a, take the leg from the fibula we take the bone from the leg and there she is. You just imagine what would have been there in the life of this young girl but for this series of surgery. I think it makes a world of difference to her and the family. Not only we bridge gaps, we also you know, functionally restore people. I think it's not that you now we just attach hands, they function. I think that's what you know. Here's a small child you now who has got a road traffic accident. There's the extensive soft tissue in the arm, there's the bone fracture is there, the blood vessels are damaged, the nerves are damaged. And then what we do is that, you no, know, usually they come late in the night. Whenever we operate on these people, we see the larger picture in what we do. It takes eight hours to eight hours of surgery they do, we have to do. And they all come in unannounced. 
That's the most important thing. I think we have to be prepared 24-7, 365. But in the end, we all feel that this girl would be like any of her classmates. She'll play as before. Her marriage and the career prospects are you know, just as been unaffected. That's what we do. This is the same child you know, two years later. That means you know, she is bending her arms, she elbow, she is holding, she is going back to the school. Now she is about a beautiful girl of you know, 17 years now. Is this in trauma reconstruction? It's not that in trauma we only is function, but then sometimes you know, microsurgery could be used. Long hair is considered to be a sense of beauty for all women. I think many of them love it. But sometimes, you know, this hair, this long hair could be caught in a moving wheel or a giant, giant wheel. The whole scalp could be this. In just in a moment of this thing, it could happen. This whole thing, whole scalp could come up. Well, it might be just only a moment, but then it could change the life for forever. But then with microsurgery, we should be able to put back in the same shell. But for a small line that you find at the place where we join is there. And she gets her hair back and she has got a hair you know, on which you know, she can wear the flowers. And the same girl now coming back after 15, 17 years later, coming back with her wedding invitation. Just imagine what would have happened if we had not done this. I will show you a case now, where it is an unfortunate victim and you know, where we are not able to do it because the scalp could not be retrieved. And that's the process they go. Just imagine what's the difference it makes from this to this. Nothing is to make a tremendous amount of difference in the lives of people. Now, the now to the question is that is it expensive? Is this the technology for our country? Is this is, is it worth the effort? The lot of research has shown that it is heavily tilted towards you know, limb salvage and recursive microsurgery. It is now extremely worth it because we have found that in our hospital we have found that quality care is the best way to reduce the cost of care. I think economics is becoming a very important part of any healthcare delivery. I think what really makes important is that we need to avoid complications and it is the complications which increase the cost of care. If you are able to give good primary care, I think that's the best way to reduce the cost of care and it is the appropriate technology for our country. So what's the paradox of India? I think in a small research that we did this is what we found. The need of India is huge. But then the availability of resources and availability of skilled manpower, there is a gap. But then tragically there is another gap, sir. I think the other gap is the gap between availability and utilization. But then if we have to fill up the gap between need and availability, that requires a lot of effort. It requires a lot of resources. It requires you know, building institutions, it requires capacity building. But then the other gap between availability and utilization, I think that can be easily be bridged if you have got the will. That means it, that, that is got by communications, education, and optimum utilization of resources and recognition of the resources. I think that's where. When I became the president of the Asian Pacific Federation, I think we need to have a tagline we can. That thing, the tagline was providing quality care to the millions who are less privileged. Is it a pipe dream? It needn't have to be. I think it, it can easily be possible where we all now can, can make it. So it is easy to bridge the gap between availability and utilization if we take you know, a little bit of you know, effort and this thing. I think we have got you know, fantastic, so many schemes in the government. I think it's all possible. The only thing is that it requires the thing with reasonable amount of compensation we can do wonders. I think that's where you know, we really want your help, sir. I think that's the way. Because each of these surgeries you know, take about you know, seven to eight hours to do. But then it is these seven hours for the rest of the seven decades of their life. If you really find what we invest and what we gain, I think you know, just it cannot be measured in numbers. I think that's what you know, we really need to do. I think that's where we have to we have to move forward. The next line, which I am taking it from the Tatas, I think he said, a great admirer of Tatas and good institutions. In one side you know, he said, the India she could be. I think the India, the India could be. I think that's where. So plastic and reconstructive surgery, sir, it requires your nurturing. I think it needs your effort and it needs your attention. Secondly, in trauma reconstructive surgery, many of our units in our country are could be counted among the world's best. I think that's very important. And plastic surgery as a specialty and the institutions which move the world forward, I think they need no nurturing. This is a famous thing you know, which I quote from Jamshir Tata. He said, there is one kind of charity common among us, which is certainly a good thing though I do not think is the best thing to do. It is that patchwork philanthropy which closes the rag, feeds the poor and heals the sick and, and halts. 
I am far away from decrying the noble spirit which seeks to help a poor and suffering fellow human. This, you know, he told when he was trying to build the Indian Institute of Science, he said, India needs basic things, but then why are you trying to nurture a important thing? Then the answer to him, which was, what advances the nation or community is not so much to prop up the weakest and the most helpless members as to lift up the best and the most gifted so as to make them the greatest service to the country. This is, I talk, this, this is I consider as a constructive philanthropy. I think that this is, I think, high time that India is moving forward. I think this is what you know, we need to have in our policy. What we really love is that India has to become a superpower. But what really happens, what we are now, we are a great knowledge providers. There's knowledge is there, we, we fashion it and they give it back. But instead from, we have to move from a knowledge provider to a knowledge creator. I think that's where you know, we'll move forward. Only when that happens, I think India will become a, India become a superpower. I am sure and it's possible because with the confidence that we have had in trauma care in Coimito, all of us now feel very proud to say that institutions get a lot of patients from down the world. But then we are proud to say that we get surgeons from all around the world. In the last 30 years, we have got 2,800 surgeons from 70 countries visiting us. I think that's quite possible in a country like India, we can do. So we need to, to make that jump, we need your help. Before it becomes too late, Please do help us, sir. And then if you take help us through a few steps, we'll jump in a few more steps. Thank you so much, sir. And then what we will aim together is that, as the Prime Minister often says, we need to provide quality of quality care to the millions who are less privileged. I think I'm sure now, together we can move, we can do it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. Manoj Jha, Head of the Department of Plastic Surgery, RML Hospital, to present a memento to Dr. Savapati sir. Uh, it's a matter of great privilege and pride that the Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Sri Rajesh Bhushanji is with us. He has been a visionary in the field of health as he is leading the health department from, from the front and has been a pillar of support. Sir, I request you to come on dais and address. Sir has other preoccupations, so we are calling him slightly ahead of time. Rest of the program will follow as per schedule. Thank you. Thank you and um, very good evening to all of you. Dr. Ravi Mahajan, President uh, APSI, the eminent specialists who are uh, present here, and uh, some of the young upcoming uh, professionals, Dr. Sameek uh, Bhattacharya, Dr. RML College and Hospital, Dr. S. Raja Sabapati, we were privileged to hear your very thought-provoking and insightful address. Dr. R. K. Khajanchi, Dr. R. B. Ahuja, Dr. Nitin Mokal, Sri Rishi Raj Singh, ladies and gentlemen. I am uh, privileged to be part of this uh, gathering today, although I would have to leave in the middle that would be my loss. Uh, when I was listening to all of you, seeing the films, what I realized was that although there is this ancient uh, tradition and legacy of uh, reconstructive, restorative surgery in India, starting from the time of Shushrut till date, when at different points in time, First, the British, then independent India, created these uh, plastic surgery units across the country in different uh, health facilities. 
and the area developed it developed into uh, a discipline that uh, virtually transcended all boundaries um, it addressed any uh, problem from head to toe it looked at all ages young uh, newborn kids their uh, issues deformities as well as old age people it looked at uh, across sexes and uh, over a period of time it developed into a cross cutting uh, kind of uh, discipline but that brings me to the first challenge which i was discussing with director general health services who's here dr atul goel i was maybe this is outsider's view and you may find fault with it i was telling dr goel that what we need to look at going ahead is greater harmony between general surgery and plastic surgery greater harmony between orthopedics and plastic surgery greater harmony and this is all within a health facility greater harmony between a organ bank and you know those organ donation initiatives within a health facility organ retrieval and plastic surgery with outside the health facility greater harmony between the needs of plastic surgery and the way the national regulator the national medical commission perceives medical education greater harmony between different programs of the union government uh, dr saab referred to ayushman bharat pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana which unfortunately does not have you know adequate appropriate packages addressing uh, these needs but there is a scope so those packages can be created so greater harmony there so what i am trying to uh, share with you and what i discussed with director general health services is that like most of the uh, specialties and super specialties we are uh, working in our own domain and space and we are quite satisfied and happy with it what we need to do is to uh, obliterate these domain specific boundaries and work in conjunction with other disciplines probably it is happening i am not very sure but this is something uh, which is the way uh, of the future it's happening in other disciplines why should it not happen here so this was one idea that uh, came to me the second uh, aspect to which i would like to draw your attention is the gap that dr saab referred to between availability and its utilization why does it happen it happens because most of the time the community is not fully aware of the facilities that are uh, available or the facilities are available in a inequitable manner dr mahajan referred to uh, one plastic surgeon being there in medical college hospital amritsar i was in a very sort of light hearted comment telling him that the medical facility he is referring to is much older than uh, pgi mer chandigarh still if it has one plastic surgeon it's a cause for concern so therefore uh, this is uh, one area where the doctors their health facilities where they are working and the community needs to work together because until and unless we make it available to people the knowledge the off take of whatever we have created in terms of physical infrastructure and the skill set the knowledge set will not increase significantly the off take will not increase significantly and this must uh, must start from uh, the first port of call of a rural uh, say patient or a rural citizen and that first port of call is a health sub center or a primary health center and uh, some of these facilities uh, would not even have a gdmo a general duty medical officer it may have 
uh, a uh, community health officer, we call them CHOs, which are basically a BSc nursing um, graduate. So there has to be a system where this first port of call identifies in time that this is the person who requires this kind of intervention and a proper referral promptly happens to a tertiary care unit where these uh, interventions, these procedures are available and if the government programs make provision for these uh, packages which would provide financial assistance to people who cannot uh, pay for such procedures and facilities, then that loop would be complete. So that is the area that we need to uh, work towards. Before I uh, close, I would like to highlight the fact that what you do is much greater than the mere procedure that you perform. It may be a surgery lasting one hour or maybe 16 hours. But the impact goes much, much beyond that. What you are doing is that you are transforming lives. You are making a patient move from despair to hope. You are, uh, in fact, creating in him a feeling of self-confidence, a feeling of being able to face the world on his or her own terms. In fact, the very first film which was shown of Kathir Vail who said that I feel that I have been reincarnated. So that in one sentence, you know, summarizes what you do. And that itself is a huge achievement. To see your patient saying that because of your efforts, I have been reincarnated, nothing could be more satisfying than that. So, I wish you well. I hope that you succeed in all your endeavours and the Union Ministry of Health and Family Welfare is there. Whatever specific inputs we would receive from you, either in course of the interaction today or at subsequent uh, times, we would be willing to take them to their logical conclusion. I once again wish all of you uh, all the success in your endeavours. Thank you. That was so motivating, sir. I request our president, Dr. Ravi Mahajan, to felicitate Secretary, sir. And it's definitely very, very important that we seamlessly uh, in, uh, include all the surgical specialities for optimization of care. That was a very pertinent advice. Repeat a lie often enough and becomes truth is the law of propaganda which was attributed to Nazi Joseph Goebbels. Pertaining to plastic surgery, movies have portrayed unrealistic results, be it John Travolta in Face Off or Rekha in Khun Bariman. Such narratives in silver screen has created myths and difficulties in the speciality. And Dr. Khazanchi, head of plastic surgery at Medanta Hospital, will be unraveling the myths and present a clear view of the speciality. Dr. Khazanji, sir.
मिस्टर राजेश भूषण मिस्टर अतुल गोयल मिस्टर ऋषि राज सिंह डॉक्टर महाजन प्रेसिडेंट ए पी एस आई माई को स्पीकर्स फ्रेंड्स एंड कोलीग्स द टास्क गिवन टू मी इज टू टॉक अबाउट मिथ्स एंड फैक्ट्स ऑफ प्लास्टिक सर्जरी एंड अवर प्रेजिडेंट इन इज ओपनिंग एड्रेस डिड एल्यूड टू सम ऑफ द मिथ्स एंड आई विल कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम वेयर ही एड लेफ्ट आई थिंक जस्ट स्टार्टिंग ऑन ए लाइटर नोट this slide is not moving can you check it should not move from here so so still not moving so when you think of a plastic surgeon what comes to your mind i am if i am at a social function often you know anybody would come when you are introduced to somebody who is not from medical fraternity uh, they ask me what do i do for a living i say well i am a plastic surgeon so what do you think i mean if all those who are not doctors here what do you think what often happens is you know the answer i get is wow you are a plastic surgeon that's great i think one day i am going to need you that's the usual response what do they need us for you know i think everybody thinks that we make people beautiful fix faces not only that we also do surgery on other parts of the body improve things make them look better make them look younger maybe they get better jobs after that yes this is true i am not saying it is false we do all that but is that all we do and you've seen some of that the answer is of course a big no there are lots of other things we do so what else do we do you've heard the story i have to go back once again into the history you heard the story of sushruta how it uh, a seed was sown at that time and it has now grown into a big tree that is of nasal reconstruction which originated in india i think these are that is the earliest reference to plastic surgery that we know of and going further it was during the two world wars that lot of plastic surgery evolved and developed further because there were patients who had injuries during the war gunshot wounds and many other blast injuries and they need repair and reconstruction i think that is that is where the plastic surgery blossomed further after its initial start by sushruta in 600 bc so what do plastic surgeons do uh, you would think most people will say that plastic surgeons do beauty operations the word plastic comes from plastos which is a greek word that means to mold which means to give shape so we give shape to something that has been destroyed or that has gone out of shape or that has been out of shape going further dr raja sabapati mentioned in his talk that as as it further evolved that giving sh restoring shape is not enough we also must make sure that while we restore shape we restore function as well for example in face it may be speech and swallowing in in case of hands it may be the, all the fine work that the hands do and in case of limbs it is walking running and all the other other things that we make sure that while we restore form we also restore function so when does one so what does a plastic surgeon do it re, he restores law, face uh, he restores form and he rest, uh, restores function and when does he come into this service very often what you know more of is normal physiological variations that somebody doesn't like his nose or some maybe the ear is a little bit mishap the eyes are shown sign of signs of aging which is the second part of this that uh, the the ravages of aging is something that the desire everybody has to stay young this is what we call cosmetic surgery but the second part is the reconstructive surgery where we deal with birth defects we deal with injuries including burns that you have heard dr raja sab of the we disease with diseases diseases which ravage the superficial parts of the body the cancers of the skin and the face and we also deal with situations where operations have to be done to remove vital parts like the one you saw in the film a femur was removed and how it was reconstructed to make sure that the patient's limb could be saved so plastic surgery is an uh, is a is an art which involves not just cosmetic surgery but other reconstructive surgery cancer injuries 
uh, birth defects, trauma surgery, etc., and the, you will hear more about it later. There is a myth that plastic surgeons use plastic. And here you are, there was a patient who asked the cost of plastic surgery, and then he, he heard about the cost, he says, well, I can get plastic myself. Why do I need to pay you so much? So plastic surgeons do need, sometimes do use some artificial things, but plastic is not one of them. We use silicon, we use titanium, and there are some other things, sometimes even gold actually as a gold weight, but certainly not plastic. So that's a very common myth that one faces. And give, just giving you a real life example, that was just a joke. We, we had a plastic surgery clinic, a nursing home here called Delhi Plastic Surgery Center. You know when the, when the plastic ban started, there was a raid on that nursing home. They thought that nursing home was not only using but also manufacturing plastic and they wanted the nursing home closed and this is a true story. The nursing home belonged to a very senior colleague who, uh, who's no more now and may his soul rest in peace but that is, that is a true story and it happened that they wanted the nursing home closed. Another myth is that plastic surgeons don't use stitches. Very often patients will come, Dr. Sir, you stitch, you don't have to go to your stitch, you don't have to plastic surgeon. Ke paas jana hai. So that's something that is not correct. Whenever there is an injury, stitches are required, but what we use are very fine stitches, something that you know you have to magnify to see, or the, even the finer stitches can be used in microsurgery. But it's a very careful suturing with, fi with fine stitches, which is important. Another myth is, in a situation like injury like that, they will say, well, we get a regular surgery do done now, pl plastic surgery can be done later. But I think if you think of that, you've lost the golden time, because in injuries, the best time to treat the injury is now. Now means at the time when the injury occurs, that is your best time to get the right treatment. So this will save a lot of problem that will happen later when you're trying to get the, the treatment or plastic surgery done later. Another myth which is that plastic surgery is different from cosmetic surgery. Now, as I've said earlier, cosmetic surgery is a part of plastic surgery. All plastic surgeons are also cosmetic surgeons. What happens is that many uh, other doctors from various, maybe other specialties, regional specialties, also do some degree of cosmetic surgery in their regions, in their specialties. And also there are many who have, have no training at all, and they also try and get this tag of cosmetic surgery because it's glamorous. It also, they think, is also pays a lot of money, so that is the attraction. But, uh, but however, uh, all plastic surgeons by training are cosmetic surgeons. They undergo rigorous training over about eight or ten years, and then, then the experience to become cosmetic surgeons or, uh, or for plastic surgeons may evolve into cosmetic surgeons, or they may practice both plastic and or reconstructive as well as cosmetic surgery. So cosmetic surgery, as I said, is a part of plastic surgery. Both, uh, both specialists or all, all these deal with the restoration of form and function. The only difference there being, as I said earlier, that if you are doing, improving something which is otherwise normal, that is cosmetic surgery, but if you are dealing with birth defects, trauma and other things, that is reconstructive surgery. Plastic surgery means no scars. Again, if we, if we tell the patient you are going to have a scar after plastic surgery, they said, I want to go to another doctor. So the fact is that whatever, whenever there is an injury or a cut, it is going to heal with scar formation. There is no other way it's going to heal and you are going to have to accept that. But what, what does a plastic surgery surgeon do that makes him, makes him different from other, other surgeons? That is to place incisions in natural skin creases or sometimes in hidden areas where you can't see them. Delicate handling of tissues, this is very important. Because the amount of scarring is something we want to control. We can't control the complete uh, disappearance of scars or complete absence of scars, but we can control how much scar is formed. So that is partly by, as I said, the type of incision you use, how you handle the tissues, this is important. And then we use very fine sutures. And after the treatment also, there is scar management, which is done after the operation to make sure we get a scar which is as, as less as possibly it can get. And this is a patient who had a nose job and some other improvement on the face done, uh, majorly on the nose. But here all the cuts that are done to improve the nose are inside the nose and you cannot see them. That is what I mean by hidden, uh, this thing. And another patient with eye bags, for example, and you see here the, the cuts are at, at this level. This is where the, the incision is, the skin incision is made from here to here from here to here. Now this goes, disappears in natural skin creases and you cannot make out that any operation has been done. 
then plastic surgery is risky is it uh, i think lot of this came with a recent news item where a patient who had uh, liposuction uh, didn't make it had some complication and passed away the answer is yes every operation is risky plastic surgeon is as risky as any other operation and the amount of risk that you face is depends upon the magnitude of operation how big the operation is also what is the patient who is undergoing the operation what is his health status what other covid diseases he has and what is uh, his uh, you know tolerance for an operation which has to be assessed for every operation and the risk has to be determined and that risk you take only if it is well worth taking that risk so there is no such thing as zero risk operation it doesn't exist is plastic surgery very expensive i think dr raja sabarthi slide had this is is plastic surgery very expensive i think this is a very sweeping statement it's like saying that uh, food is very expensive i mean you can eat in a five you can have a fancy meal in a five star restaurant pay about 10000 rupees or you can have a simple meal in a, in a dhaba simple meal in a dhaba pay about 500 it depends upon your need it depends upon what you eat whether you order a uh, michelin star restaurant dish or whether you eat a simple good food from an ordinary place the price is different so it's not not something every plastic surgery is expensive yes cosmetic surgeries tend to be expensive but the the people who need them also are able to afford them and and this is since once it is for vanity then of course there there should be no concessions there another thing that was again mentioned earlier uh, dr uh, uh, samik mentioned that the movies uh, face off uh, khoon bari mang you can change from change a person from one face to another totally different of course we can we can bring about changes for example in a, in a, this patient who had really no jaw bone that we had to develop a new jaw bone for uh, for her by plastic surgical techniques you can do that her basic face remains same she hasn't become a different person similarly other surgeries a lot of modifications on the face can be done by changing their bone structure like in this case the both the upper and lower jaw were not not in right proportion so just by setting the proportion right we can make a lot of changes but this is it's not as if we can change one one actress into another actress completely and that's a myth but certainly a lot of improvements are possible uh, without really a total change so i'll uh, going towards the end i'll finish by saying that plastic surgeon what is a plastic surgeon that's what i started with plastic surgeon is not confined to a region or an, or an organ system he's not a intestinal surgeon or a or a or a uh, any region throat surgeon or something like that or a heart surgeon which are region specific specialties a plastic surgeon operates from head to toe he operates on skin fat muscles tendons nerves blood vessels and bones and restores form restores function wherever there is some deformity or wherever there is loss of function the plastic surgeon's role comes in having said that so he's a, he's your all encompassing problem solving surgeon having said that we also get some strange uh, request sometimes just as a, as a little joke that here is a patient who says i am told that i have pretty feet but i'd like to see them so she needs surgery for that and that can be fixed but sometimes there are things that we cannot fix uh, there is a lot of prevalence of this selfie syndrome there people click their own pictures and they come to us that my picture doesn't look good i well i'll tell them you look good leave leave your picture out of it you don't need to see but my picture shows that something is not right so we need to understand as plastic surgeons we need to understand where to op where to do an operation where not to do i think a, a good plastic surgeon is the one who knows how to operate and a better plastic surgeon is the one who knows when not to operate i think that is also very important and uh, the last thing that i want to say is that plastic surgery attracts lot of people uh, maybe the 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 uh, the glamour of money is there who are untrained fly by night operators take a little uh, do some little two weeks two month one month courses and and pretend to be surgeons and they end up you know when you think that uh, he says that i watched a video on youtube and he is telling the patient you should be fine i think this is something you ought to be able to to be able to choose if anybody has to go for plastic surgery make sure you are informed and you choose your surgeon wisely and make sure that he is trained to do what what he is supposed to be doing thank you for your attention please thank you sir i request dr vijay Dr. Vijay Sekretary, PSI, to felicitate Dr. Kazanji.
for his wonderful lecture. Nice pun and humor, sir. That was really lighten up the day. A famous author, Dave Pelzer, had once said that you can be a oh, uh, secretary sir is leaving. He has some other preoccupation. We will continue with the program as per schedule. Dave Pelzer, a famous author, once said that you can be a victim of cancer or a survivor of cancer. It's a mindset. When a terror-stricken cancer patient faces prospect of disfigurement due to cancer surgery, Plastic surgery surgeons come as hope, restoring normal form and function. Dr. Rajiv Ahuja, sir, will consult in Gangaram Hospital, an exponent in reconstructive surgery, will take you to the realm of difficult reconstructive challenges of face, trunk and extremities. Thank you. Thank you, Samik. Uh, the Chief Guest, uh, Shri uh, Rajesh Bhushan, has left. But uh, we have our DG, uh, Dr. Atul Goel, and uh, guest of honor, Rishi Raji, and uh, my colleagues and past presidents with us. First of all, I must uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Ravi Mahajan for having conceived this uh, idea of creating public awareness through a film festival. This was extremely unique and uh, when we sat in the executive and we were contemplating how will he pull it off, uh, it will be so difficult to make movies and to have them uh, screened. But I think with the success of this program which I am seeing over the last two days, uh, I must congratulate him for having conceived this idea for our specialty and for our association. Yeah. The other is that uh, I'm extremely happy to uh, learn from uh, our secretary's uh, talk that there should be coordination between plastic surgeon and oncology surgeon, plastic surgeon and uh, orthopedic surgeon and all the other surgeons, surgical specialties because plastic surgery is the problem solving for every specialty. That's how plastic surgery originated. All the surgical things which others couldn't do, other specialties couldn't do from head to toe were clubbed and they were called plastic surgery. And now all the other specialties which contributed to the development of plastic surgery are want to, wanting to nibble away this because they think that this is very lucrative and this is the way to go and they are all knowing at our specialty. So I think the, the other thing which he mentioned was that the, this should be part of the education. Yes, plastic surgery is hardly taught at MBBS level. Even at MS general surgery level, I was head of Mulana Zad plastic surgery department. I know there was hardly any teaching for the MS students in plastic surgery. So if they are not taught plastic surgery at even at MS level, how will they know how to cooperate as a general surgeon with plastic surgeon or how will an orthopedic surgeon know how to cooperate uh, or call for a plastic surgeon. It is very later in life when they are professionals that they learn that they can take each other's help. And you'll be very surprised that India is the burn capital of the world and burn management is not taught till you are at the MCH training level. I have I tried my best that the National Medical Commission or the National Board would take up a fellowship or a degree course in burn management but it had not materialized but since our DG is here I would just request him that if they can look into this because we need more and more burn surgeons in this country. I will just add a few slides to all this public awareness talks which you have already heard which have been very enlightening. And I'll just share a few of these uh, examples with you. I don't know why this went blank. Plastic surgery operations very often are like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. 
you have to put on your thinking hat and each case is absolutely different from the other although it may be a cancer it may be cancer of the face it may be uh, pressure sore or it may be something else but each case becomes very different from the other and every time you have to really think which is the best procedure for that patient so let's just take through a few examples since I'm, I was given to speak on uh, cancer and uh, things. So this is a basal cell carcinoma. Now any surgeon would be able to excise this. This is not a problem. You just give a little bit of margin and excise it. But then you tend to risk the loss of eye. And there could be watering over several months. And the patient could lose the eye if this is not properly reconstructed. So with proper adjustment of the local tissues, the flaps, you can see it's a near normal uh, result that the patient has been delivered. Again, so there are many plastic surgeons in the country who are trained head and neck surgeons. They will be able to excise and reconstruct at the same time. And it is not necessary always to be looking for an oncosurgeon for head and neck reconstruction and for this. Most of the head and neck units, head and neck surgery units, oncology units, they have employed full-time plastic surgeons with them because they feel that they should take large chunk of the share of the uh, money and the plastic surgeon should be employed with them whereas the plastic surgeon would be spending six hours in reconstruction and the oncology surgeon would be just spending one or two hours in excision. So this is an example of an excision for a lip carcinoma with done reconstructed with microsurgery and you can see the kind of result uh, that we have achieved. Again mandibular tumors, such huge mandibular tumors, uh, plastic surgeons can excise themselves. They can use the fibula which has been, uh, you have heard of the use of fibula before and you can see the kind of result. Another patient with a very large tumor of the mandible which was excised and you can see the kind of result. So no oncology surgeon is involved in this. It is just done by plastic surgeons. Again, a scalp tumor. You can see a huge scalp tumor where the skull bone is involved. Almost the entire amount of scalp, uh, full scalp has been removed and a flap has been taken from the side and back of the uh, chest and you can see with microsurgery this kind of result has been achieved. A very important thing which I would like to share with you is that plastic surgeons treat facial palsy which not many people will know. Whether it is immediate trauma to the facial nerve or it's a long-standing 10-20 years old uh, facial palsy, uh, we can restore function which is facial palsy is very debilitating. A patient is not able to uh, eat properly, it drools, is not able to speak properly, not smile properly and plastic surgeons can restore the smile even if it is a long-standing facial palsy. You don't need to go to ENT surgeons for consultation. Uh, you just refer yourself to a plastic surgeon and a competent plastic surgeon will be able to uh, deliver an excellent symmetrical smile and result with the help of uh, microsurgical techniques. This is where an uh, expendable nerve from the leg was taken and uh, it was attached to the normal side facial nerve branch to re innervate the paralyzed side. Reconstruction in head and neck region could be uh, re required for trauma, for burns. This is a patient with electrical burn, a huge defect. You have seen uh, in Dr. Sabhapati's slide the, uh, the reimplantation of the scalp, and you see here that the defect which would have been very difficult to reconstruct has been adequately covered with the help of skin flaps and you can hardly make out that this patient ever had that kind of an electrical injury. Breast cancer is one of the most common cancers in women and you can see that the amount of breast reconstruction being done in the western countries is enormous. This is a part of the female identity, but yet it is not sold or told or counseled to the patient of a breast cancer in India. And that is very unfortunate because 
our general surgeons or breast surgeons who remove the breast who are the first persons to see the patient don't counsel that a breast can be reconstructed and the patients are not aware of it so this is a patient who came to us uh, say maybe 8 9 months or a year after her mastectomy and after a couple of procedures you can see the breast has been reconstructed and not only that but the opposite breast which was deflated has been uh, restored to a bit of symmetry and even the nipple areola has been reconstructed now the best time to reconstruct the breast following a mastectomy is immediate reconstruction whatever be the stage of the breast if the patient uh, breast cancer if the patient wants uh, to have it reconstructed the best time is uh, immediate reconstruction primary reconstruction at the time of excision of this and this can only be done if the breast surgeon or the onc surgeon counsels the patient there is a tumor board or kind of a thing and a joint meeting with the plastic surgeon and they counsel the patient it can increase the cost a bit but then it restores the identity of the lady uh, so tremendously so you can see this patient an immediate reconstruction has been done with an uh, with a microsurgery with an abdominal flap and uh, this is a single stage procedure this we have talked about uh, how the forehead flap rhinoplasty evolved and has come to be identified as the indian uh, rhinoplasty although the indian rhinoplasty uh, described as sushrut was with a cheek flap and i just put this up so that for for the sake of completion that uh, this is how a forehead flap uh, one of the types of forehead flap there can be many types of forehead flap uh, which can be used in reconstruction and you can see in the profile view uh, the the kind of reconstruction we do with with this another uh, ailer uh, defect of the nose which has been uh, restored with the help of a composite graft so this is another technique which we use uh, very often in uh, small defects and lastly i'll uh, talk to you about this uh, temporomandible joint ankylosis dr khazanchi did show one patient uh, with a jaw deformity which was restored that was following a temporomandible joint uh, ankylosis the, these joints of the of the jaw they they fuse because of a uh, trauma in the childhood and the patient is not able to eat or open the mouth and the mandible doesn't grow and the plastic surgeons can only restore this and it is not the ENT surgeons or the oral surgeons it is just the plastic surgeons you need for this kind of a job thank you very much thank you sir for showcasing such challenging aspects of reconstructive surgery i request dr pallav secretary of delhi chapter to felicitate ahuja sir I and Dr. Palla both are students of Dr. Ahuja. We share the same mentor. There is only one pretty child in this world and every mother has it. It's a Chinese proverb. And nothing is more devastating for a mother to find her child born with deformity. Plastic surgery is solace to such souls in distress and by restoring normalcy in children and bring smiles to thousand mothers. And Dr. Nitin Mokal, President-elect of APSI, a deft cleft surgeon, will deliver plastic surgery we deliver a lecture on plastic surgery in birth defects dr mokul sir down yeah down respected dr atul goel guest of honor dr mr ishraj singh president dr ravi mahajan and members of the apsi executive committee the birth defects are very common 
it is very important to know the causes and prevention and their detection and after detection the counseling and the comprehensive management the genetic is the commonest uh, uh, cause of the birth defects and the consanguineous marriages are the commonest amongst the doubt to mothers taking the drugs like steroids antiepileptic antibiotics and antiviral the smoking alcohol and addictions and the women with the low social economic group having a folic acid and zinc deficiency are the commonest causes after post conception the first 6 weeks are very important that is the time the orgasmogenesis occur the facial growth occurs in first 6 weeks and any trauma occurs in this period of organogenesis the patient develops a deformity called a cleft lip and palate if there is failure of fusion of the medial and lateral nasal wall processes and maxillary process they gives rise to a unilateral cleft lip and if it occurs on the both the sides fail to fuse then there is a bilateral cleft lip how do you prevent you prevent by public education about the dangers of consanguineous marriages we provide the supplement of folic acid and zinc to the newly married women and the pregnancy planning which is very very important for the couple should be mentally and physically fit and healthy to undergo process of child bearing it is very important to detect the these type of deformities by using the ultrasound and this particular slide shows you the deformity involved in the cleft and the palate it is very important to know that if the patient is having a difficult uh, and unmanageable cleft deformities or other other anomalies which can be terminated by taking the expert's opinion the ear deformities also can be diagnosed on ultrasound and once the it is diagnosed ultrasoundly then a parent should be called for the antenatal counseling so in antenatal counseling we have to prepare the patients and the relatives for a delivery of the child and prepare the mother for the breastfeeding in a straddle or football position and treat train all the family members to give a bottle feeding in a proper way there are a lot of videos available for the breastfeeding in a cleft lip and palate patients at the age of 4 months and a 5 kg weight and a hemoglobin 10 grams per cent we can repair the cleft lip and the nose and the aim is to achieve the symmetry and the continuity at the age of 8 to 12 months it is very important to repair the cleft palate so all the muscles which are cut and displaced at one side they are brought to the normality and we repair this cleft palate to achieve a better speech and at this time we send the patient to the speech pathologist then they train the parents about the speech therapy and a regular interval if there is any deformity of the speech defect in the speech then we do an endoscopy to see how much is the gap how much is the velo pharyngeal closure and then depending upon that we decide upon any surgery required for improvement in the speech result we can do a lateral palatogram to see the distance between the soft palate and the posterior pharyngeal wall and we decide about the surgery accordingly when the child grows when he is into mixed dentition when the uh, the milk tooth starts falling and the new tooth starts coming that is the time we refer these patients to our orthodontic colleague and this orthodontic colleague they prepare this patient for the arch alignments and prepare them for the another uh, surgery called as alveolar bone grafting this particular patient is he can see that our orthodontic colleague has nicely aligned the arch and we perform a small surgery where there we take out a small cancellous bone chips with a small incision and put in that area of a bony defect and which allows that canine tooth to come down nicely to complete the arch in one line and this is how you can align the arch once the patient becomes 18 to 19 years of age where there is a, even a some sort of a deformity where the upper jaw doesn't grow properly and the disproportionate close of the lower jaw causing difficulty in chewing there is difficulty in appearance the appearance becomes affected and that is the time we have to do a orthognathic surgery 
The orthognatic surgery planning is done by orthodontist colleague and a computer engineer where we can plan how much is the upper jaw to be brought forward, how much is the lower jaw to be set back. And most of the patients, they require the maxillary advancement and the mandibular setback. By intraoral approach, we advance the maxillary and uh, we set back the mandible and we fix all the osteotomy sites with the help of a good titanium plates and screws which allow better bony healing. Once the bony healing is occurred, we can see there is a marked improvement in the profile of the patient, both front view and the lateral view. Once this bony profile becomes good consolidated and the bony platform is up, uh, achieved, we do a nose rhinoplasty because majority of the patients with the cleft deformities, they, do a, they require a bony, the nose the, uh, deformity corrected. So we harvest the costochondral graft and use a cordicellus graft for the nasal dorsum and the columella strut and the elevation of the nose. And the final uh, 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 treatment is by our prosthodontic colleague. They do give a dental rehabilitation, a good prosthesis to achieve a good smile. You can see that drastic change in this particular patient where the profile is good, the lateral profile is good and there is marked improvement in her smile and the confidence in this patient. This is another patient with the cleft nose deformities where the symmetry has been achieved, the profile has been achieved and these are the patients we, a plastic surgeon as a leader, the prosthodontist, orthodontist, speech pathologist, our anesthetia colleagues, the pediatrician and our computer engineer, they can prepare a good amount of uh, comprehensive care and we can give a good uh, smile to these patients without any stigmata of the cleft lip and palate. We can also do our ear reconstruction using a costochondral graft at the age of 10 to 11 years of age. If there is a tissue shortage, then with the help of a prosthodontic colleague, we can do osseointegrated implants and use uh, artificial ear prosthesis. This particular patient is a case of a cruzons, a severe cranial synostosis, a orbit which is smaller, the jaw is retruded back, a tracheostomy dependent, and these are the patients, they require the expansion of the skull, the orbit need to be restored back to its new size, the maxilla need to be advanced and we use a, a new co a techniques called as a distraction technique. With that we expand the skin, expand the skeletal framework and bring back the patient to its normality. So take home message, educate all the patients about the pregnancy planning, stay healthy who are planning to have a baby, Provide the good vitamin supplements in at least first three months of prior to the planning of the pregnancy. Detect by using a good ultrasound machine. Train the parents and prepare the parents for the pregnancy and the further line of treatment. Bring the child to a good center where there is a team present to provide a good comprehensive care. And one appeal to all the decision makers sitting in the crowd to support all the plastic surgery departments in the government institution in terms of creating more post and teaching and the clinical work, provide adequate funds for the necessary basic and advanced equipments like microscope, powered and precision cutting instruments. Advanced technology can be used like a intraop scan and the navigation and last and not the least, just like a polio eradication drive, we can have no bird defect drive. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mokal sir. I request Dr. Sujata, uh, ex-co member APSI, to kindly felicitate Dr. Nitin Mokal. We have uh, Mr. Rishiraj Singh, Indian Police Services, with us as guest of honor. Mr. Rishiraj Singh has a very illustrious career as a senior police officer of India. He is the one who investigated and charge sheeted the other scam. And something pertaining to our speciality also, as DGP Police Kerala, 
he worked on the traffic flow and reduced traffic accidents in Kerala. So, and a part of, uh, uh, of his experience, life experience of Dr. Rishira, Mr. Rishirat Singh is that he is a patient of cleft and he is with us to show that what human grit can take a person forward. How he tackled the problem in a time when cleft surgery was quite rare in this country. Mr. Rishijat Singh, sir. Respected uh, doctors, Shri Rajesh Bhushan, the AAS, Principal Secretary for Health to the Government of India, the <coughs> Director of Health Services, Dr. Zavi Mahajan, and other distinguished doctors and guests. Yesterday also there was a talk about uh, the matters on which we are speaking today here. Yesterday also I spoke twice, but I see in the gathering a lot of other people have come today which were not there yesterday. They might be wondering what I am doing here. Uh, I mean, I am not a doctor. So, <clears throat> first of all, I should be telling you that I was also an acute patient of cleft palate as well as cleft lip. Lip, you can see with this yourself. I was born in 1961 in Bika at Bikaner, Rajasthan. There was no facility for these kind of operations over there. The head of the department at that time, Dr. Kartju, he operated on me and he did a certainly, nowadays the doctors say, she certainly did not do a good job. You can see there is stitches, merely 14 stitches, what he implanted on my lip. So somehow the lip cleft was, that problem was sorted out. But the, uh, the palate cleft was uh, no way. We went to, my father took me around everywhere. He, we went to Jaipur. Even I came to in 1976 in, at Ames also. Dr. Uh, Dr. Srivastava on this yesterday was, uh, uh, was uh, telling me the, if you would have gone the, if you would have gone across the road, probably you would have been operated upon because in Safdarjang Hospital, I think the plastic surgery department was working from 1963. Somehow, Ames didn't have it. So, we were sent back. Then we were informed that Dr. C. Balakrishnan was allowed to open the maybe the one of the initial uh, this plastic surgery department in PGI Chandigarh. So we went over there and then he was not willing. He was objecting on two points. One, he was saying that I would be doing a normal operation by taking your skin from your body and then putting it and just stitching everything. So for that I have to open your mouth and I am not sure because it has to be opened in a very big manner and he was, he says he was, he said he was not sure whether the mouth will come back to his original position. I heard him saying, I remember, that was in 1978. And second thing he was saying that your skin as you grow in age, your skin becomes like parchment. So even if I put it, there is no guarantee, it may just turn into two. So he says that uh, it, it is a difficult thing and uh, you are too, you are too old for this operation. But somehow we, uh, we insisted as I was telling yesterday, in schools and colleges the plastic surgeons should kindly, should ask your patients if they are coming late. Life is very difficult in the schools and colleges, everybody keeps on making fun of you. I mean, we are the source of entertainment, let me tell you. At the moment they see me or a, a person like me, 
or or with some other ailments also like somebody is hackling somebody is uh, there is a problem maybe he may not be having a proper hand or a proper leg like th there are so many dif deformities in uh, in one's body but in the school the uh, it becomes a we all becomes the butt of cruelty i mean everybody laughs at us we cannot ask questions in the class the moment i ask i was very curious then all will start laughing including teacher so the teacher will say no no you don't ask you write and give it to us <coughs> very depressing i mean sometime even this uh, the thoughts of committing suicide have also passed in my mind as well as it might be passing through in others minds also so when i recollected all those things so i told my father that it is better to die here on the operation table rather than going and facing this humiliation again and again so operation was done you know you being doctors some of the senior doctors are here there was no concept in pga at least i don't know about other hospitals this there was no concept of taking your signatures and signing that we have that we the hospital will not be responsible if something goes wrong in my case copies of records they took the signatures of my father it was done and it was 6 hours operation was done and you can see yourself it by god's grace it became a high success he gave me a lot of exercises which i am doing till today like blowing the table tennis ball there are some exercises opening the opening my mouth nearly as fullest as possible and there are some uh, three four exercises all you know you have been you have been prescribing those things every day which i do this regularly and reading the newspaper in the full blown voice at least for 5 minutes maybe that may be the reason so when they say that uh, i am a cleft patient so half of them don't believe they say that uh, well it doesn't look like but the that has been the case now i have only four suggestions for the doctors as well as for the parents which i told yesterday also so one is this problem has not been included in the definition of handicap as i understand i also wanted to know the can would i know this uh, this, uh, this before the operation i asked the doctors that uh, am i a handicap do they say you are not in a handicap i remember a doctor reading the definition of handicap if you are circum even if any part of your body is slightly circum it is slightly circumcised for example even this toe is slow, is somehow suppose you have lost even only this much of part as far as government of india's definition of handicap is concerned you are in a handicap but a person like me suppose okay you have operated upon someone it is fine people will speak like me also but what about those people who could not get operated there are in villages there are so many people i see i come from a rural area there are people who have not been operated upon and they are they are speaking that you may not be knowing doctors because so this what happens i speak and the whole air goes from my mouth only my mother or my father would just imagine that i might have tried to say these words the other person doesn't understand what i have said that is the basic reason i mean we are speaking in my in my uh, concern i am speaking but the others nobody understands that's the problem there so like in india in today's time four district collectors Uh, 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 the four IAS officers are district collectors who are totally blind. I know those. This uh, <clears throat> so now you can say that they could have been operated upon. They should have been operated. Their eyes should have. Uh, they should have got bad. They might have tried, but then the ultimate result is that they couldn't be operated and they are blind. So if a blind person that his blindness had been taken into consideration and he is a patient and he is included in the definition of handicap why not that person who somehow could not get operated for this cleft palate and if he attempts for even the exam or so he should also be, because he is speaking but nobody is understanding so that is a suggestion i was talking to dr mahav dr ravi mahajan 
he honestly confessed that they never thought about this thing and he has promised that he would be taking up this matter because there are many people Achha. and then they don't allow us I wanted to go to the army in this exam I wanted to appear you know in every school there is a C certificate uh, kind of a thing where the there is an army unit is there navy unit is there they say no 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 you cannot Amari samaj bhi nahi aata hai aap kya bol rahe ho aap jao yahan se you are not allowed neither they take it as any handicap nor they allow us to appear in the exam so it's a very difficult so we are so we are it is a double jeopardy neither i am able to speak properly and nor i am being allowed to even to appear for any exam that should be stopped so my request is that the 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 district i i wished to tell this to rajesh bhushan but since uh, the others may make him available of uh, this problem second is the humiliation which is meted out to people like us should be brought under the definition of ragging act of 2011 if you read the as a police officer i i could think about this a ragging act is like harassing someone it is basically it is applicable m- more in the higher classes or even in the colleges where you are physically you are torturing someone or mentally uh, this mentally you are torturing someone i am of the view that even in the lower primary even in the upper primary even in the, from the first second third fourth standards if someone is being made laughed at because of this problem and if he or she tells it to the principal or to the parents so that should be taken uh, legally the uh, an fir should be i mean this should be brought under the domain of a ragging act a, an act, an a criminal act under the ragging act only then the humiliations or the the other kind of uh, uh, this nonsensical treatment given to the people like us can be brought down third is your style of advertisement as i was telling him as a police officer i came to know that 50 crore people are migrants people have migrated from their places kerala alone is such a small place uh, such a small state kerala alone has 50 lakhs migrant workers from other states what i want to tell you that those people have moved on now their family 99% don't keep they don't take their families along with them only men moves so their families are at home places like from odisha who all the migrant labor uh, this which uh, this from which states they come in kerala at least in the kerala scenario i know they are from odisha jharkhand the west bengal up chatisgarh uh, uh, like this assam even the north is the all of the so i see a lot of advertisement of the smile train and all these things in the newspapers and even at times on the doordarshan on the uh, on the tv also those families at least we, uh, let us talk about those 50 crore people's family those families are not going to see the newspaper or they are not going uh, the chances are that they may not see the newspaper regularly or to see the tv but they are definitely sending their children to the school to the play school or to the schools for the first standard second standard third standard simply because that indian schools have started giving food over there so your data you can easily you can find out from the schools that who is suffering from this your cleft problem so so immediately they will tell you that this boy or that boy is having so your uh, more connect there is a need for more communication by the doctors in this field with the schools you will automatically you will come to know google says that there are 10 lakhs still cleft palate uh, the cleft palate patients in india you see in a country of 140 crores i still think that this data may be may not be correct it there may be more people i go to my village and believe me i always come across i can even immediately i can find out by the moment the person the boy or the girl is speak so by seeing their face also that he is a cleft patient 
But then they are there, I mean, uh, these, all these facilities which we are talking about, they are only in the big cities. Rajasthan even doesn't have anything. You tell me, I mean, even Savai Man Singh Hospital or so, I mean, still, uh, as Mr. somebody, Dr. Ravi Mahajan was saying, the 45 years ago there was one plastic surgeon, and even today also in Amrathsarasura somewhere there is only one plastic surgeon. So, to know who all are the patients, I think if you connect with the schools, you will get a better figure and a bigger figure. And the fourth is, please tell the parents for two things, who come, nowadays as I understand the cleft lip is below the age of uh, six months and the cleft uh, palate is below the age of one year. So, uh, they should be asked to come for the follow-up action because the follow-up action is huge. I just attended, this is my fifth national level uh, conference. I am thankful to the doctors like Ravi Mahajan or so. They have almost made me a brand ambassador for this cause. They say that if you being a complete patient of this problem, if, uh, if you have made it, that uh, you are speaking clearly or so, so if you come and speak to the parents of uh, the uh, of those children who are suffering from this problem so they will rather convincingly they will listen my talk and they will also try to do their the respective operation for their children as soon as possible so the f but the operation itself is the first stage as the doctor sabapati was saying just now i attended a, a this uh, cleft uh, the, the smile train arranged the, uh, this function in Trishur for in the honor of Dr. Adnawala. You know that he was a, he he did all these uh, all these surgeries for 50 years. Though he was from Maharashtra, but he did all these uh, surgeries for 50 years in Trishur Medical College, private medical college. So there they were saying that uh, the nowadays this I think in my case it was only two operations. One this. But my dental treatment was there for seven years. Dr. Ashok Kutreza, he operated on me for seven years, from 1978 to 1985. So follow-up action is very important, which you should be telling them. And secondly, please tell your parents that keep on asking their children whether they are facing any problem, any humiliation in the school. Because the tendency, as I had the tendency, a child's cognitive development is only this, that unless you ask him or her, they won't tell. Even if they tell, I mean, parents are so busy that they don't give them much attention. So that puts them in a, that puts them more under the stress and they become more depressive and then probably they can even harm their bodies if they are not listened. So please give suggestion to your, to the, uh, to the parents that please keep on asking every day almost. They did anybody, uh, is, because this will take time, because there are so many surgeries now associated with, I am told, there I was told that nearly seven to eight, I talked to the children, I like to talk to them, they say, hey, uncle, we are, uh, sir, we are going to have seven, seven more, uh, I am supposed to come seven more times over here, there is supposed to be some six or seven surgeries are happening now, that is one for the speech, one for even, for nose, one for even, uh, um, I mean, for there are so many things. And the last thing is, uh, that is rather uh, slightly, lightly in nature, this, your, think about <laughs> changing the name of your department, that is plastic surgery. This plastic is creating a lot of confusion. I have a suggestion, why don't we call it as a restoration surgery. This will take care of even your reconstructions, uh, surgery or even your cosmo this uh, this uh, cosmetology surgery everything will come with the restoration surgery because cosmo like this enhancement of uh, your body parts or you look mean that is also good i mean everybody wants that but what about what we are talking about you are dealing with some even uh, you are dealing with the the more serious nature like nobody somebody doesn't have a hand somebody doesn't have a leg people like me who are born with the birth defects so you are dealing with much more sensitive uh, 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 things so 
the department if it is called restoration therapy uh, this restoration surgery i think that will attract uh, the more seriousness to the whole of this cause so thank you very much sir for inviting me and uh, giving me an opportunity i am really thankful to dr ravi mahajan who who invited me and all the best sir thanks thank you sir i request dr ravi mahajan sir president apsi to felicitate rishi raj sir we have among us uh, dr professor atul goel director general health services ministry of health government of india dr atul goel is uh, from we share the same alma mater in medical education he is from university college of medical science and he is a proficient uh, academician has been a university topper all through it's it's very good and very fortunate for us to have a such an academician in this position dr atul goel before joining as uh, uh, dghs was vice principal in lady hardin medical college and has been professor of uh, an unit head in my hospital also in rml professor atul goel sir kindly address the gathering with your words of wisdom thank you uh, dr samik well uh, words of wisdom he says words of wisdom i don't know whether i'll be speaking some words of wisdom but i'll definitely share some thoughts which will be away from plastic surgery first of all the uh, the uh, speaker regarding uh, cleft palate i would like to mention i've spoken to dr ravi mahajan he'll give us a letter and we'll look at this fact look at this fact whether we could uh, offer some concessions as far as uh, uh sufferings by the for these children are concerned now for example for uh, ch children with learning disability we tend to have who have the exam orally because writing may have spelling mistakes so in these patients it could be the reverse they could be asked to give exams only in written with no oral by us so a lot of things could be done that way how much would be the disability that's a separate issue but we can take this up issue uh, take this issue up at the director general directorate level only probably uh, we can recommend to the government to do something about it now as far as uh, other things are concerned i saw the first presentation where the function of the hands was restored so i think the first thought that should come up when we get up in the morning is that we are healthy people with normal hands walking normally so that thought should strike our mind when i talk to the juniors today talk to my colleagues today i often in in government hospitals especially the answers i get are something which hurt me actually i am told that there is no incentive for working hard in the government there is no incentive for working hard there is no punishment for not working now i it doesn't really it doesn't really uh, create any stir in my mind but it just hurts me you see the joy of restoring the functions of hands in a particular patient should be the greatest incentive i am a physician by choice the greatest earning that i have as a physician is when the patient comes back to me telling me that i am fine and he wants to come back time and again because most of the diseases in medicine are chronic so patients keep coming back the very fact that they want to come back to you is the biggest uh, earning that you get in this profession it's not about money it's not about monetary incentive it's not about other incentives the other thing we talk of sushrutta and charaka we talk of our rich heritage where was it lost it was lost because uh, to an extent the knowledge was restricted which means it was not shared knowledge increases only when it is shared you can't restrict it to a person if you are a good surgeon that's very nice that's excellent but if you don't train enough people to be as good as you it's useless so the best way to learn is to teach that's what i feel the more you teach the more you learn your horizon becomes greater so uh, in another uh, talk something was said about life preservation 
I think the first speaker mentioned about life preservation where he mentioned the era of the antibiotics. I think the wheel has gone a full circle. Here we are at a stage where even the WHO has started discussing about antimicrobial resistance, AMR. Till three, four, five years back, they were always, already, always talking of newer antibiotics. Today, when there are no new antibiotics in the pipeline, we are speaking of antimicrobial resistance. So as doctors, as general person, it becomes our duty to minimize the use of antibiotics, to, to only use them when they are necessary. Because frankly, there are no more antibiotics, newer antibiotics in the pipeline which are going to come in the next 5 to 10 years. So you should try and preserve whatever you have. Now coming to some more things, I think uh, cosmetic surgery, cosmetic surgery is to plastic surgery what cardiac surgery is to cardiothoracic surgery. Now, when a person takes up cardiothoracic surgery, 95% or 99% want to be only cardiac surgeons. Nobody wants to operate on the other part, which is the dirty part, part of it. So, same thing is about plastic surgery. Cosmetic surgery becomes the lucrative aspect, becomes the uh, glamorous aspect. The rest of the things, they, they go into the background. And... Uh, he was talking about him being a cleft palate patient. I have a, something to share. You can look at my hand. I had syndactyly. I was born with a syndactyly. And as uh, I grew up, my fingers started bending. So I was operated when I was in class 4. This surgery was not done by a plastic surgeon. This surgery was done by a general surgeon at Dr. Lamanoloyo Hospital in 1970 by Dr. J.P. Singh. And I think he has done a fairly good job. I have almost complete function. Well, that was my first exposure to plastic surgery. That was my first exposure to what is called a graft or a pedicle graft. This finger of mine, from here a graft was taken and put it on this finger. So it was a pedicle graft that was given to me. Well, that was also my introduction to medicine. That was the time when I took a decision to be a doctor. One more thought I will share of the same time. My surgery started at 6 a.m. in the morning. At that time, OT at Dr. Ramanur Lohi Hospital used to start at 6 a.m. in the morning. It used to go on for 14 hours. It used to end at 8 p.m. at night. Dr. J.P. Singh used to go home, have his dinner, and then have his post-operative round at 10.30. That was the culture that hospitals were made of. Today, we talk of a 9 to 4 job. You were talking of 365, 24 into 7 and 365. That's the, that's the kind of service that is required in our profession. We can't really work from 9 to 4. We can't have an office job. And then say, uh, well, things are not happening. The, the present health minister has asked me to provide a status of surgeries. So in Sabdajang Hospital, where Dr. Sujata comes from, it's 18 months of waiting for simple surgeries in surgery department. You can't have surgeries department running surgery departments running if you have just one major surgery during the whole day and two minor surgeries in a single day. That's not the way it, it can be done. So probably these are things we need to look into ourselves. And one last thought, you're talking of surgeons, plastic surgeons being not available. I think years of hard work go into making the, a master plastic surgeon. Years of hard work, actual work, not reading. It's like, you know, it's like learning about driving a car. You cannot learn driving a car by reading books, by passing exams and getting degrees. You have to ultimately drive the car on the road to be able to learn driving. Same thing applies to every aspect which requires practical experience. So unless that is explained to our students, that kind of a change has to be brought at the level of national education policy. I think most of us from, are from an era where we used, to do, we used to do a house job. We used to do internship, work hard during every internship. Today, there is no, no practically no work during internship. There is not a house job. Postgraduate seats are collected like you are buying vegetables in a market. At a particular rank, what seat is available is picked up. That's the way the postgraduate seats are distributed. So there is something very basic that's going wrong in our medical education which needs to change. And let's hope uh, we are able to do something positive there. Any day, that was a nice experience to be here. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much.
thank you so much sir uh, sir said that I, I asked for his CV and his reply was that it's destiny that has put me in this seat it says it all God has been very kind and we are very happy that you are with us I will take the privilege of felicitating you myself Uh, I request uh, Dr. Sujata to please present the vote of thanks for this evening event. Uh, respected guests and dear friends, I hope that you have all thoroughly enjoyed this Shushuta Film Festival which was organized by APSI on the occasion of Plastic Surgery Day today. Uh, as the EXCO member for APSI, today it is my honor and privilege to give a vote of thanks to all those people who made this wonderful event possible. First and foremost, I would like to thank uh, Sri Rajesh Bhushanji, who was uh, the Secretary of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for gracing this event. And his uh, presence has definitely inspired and motivated us. Professor Dr. Atul Goyal Sarji, our uh, Director General of Health Services, who has incidentally also been my teacher when I was doing my MBBS and internship. It was an immense pleasure for us, sir, that you joined our event and bestowed us by being our guest of honor. Your words have guided us for the betterment of this noble cause of plastic surgery as a restorative mode. Sri Rishi Raj Singh Ji, our guest of honor, we thank you for your presence and for sharing your profound thoughts with us today. I would like to thank our organization, APSI, for giving us this opportunity to gather here today, and especially our president, Dr. Ravi Mahajan Sarji, for shouldering the responsibility of this huge undertaking to create public awareness regarding plastic surgery. I would like to also thank our past presidents, Dr. Rajiv Ahuja, Dr. Sabapati, Dr. Khajanji, Dr. Nitin Mukul, who is the president-elect for APSI, for their esteemed presence at this event and their never-ceasing support and guidance. I would also like to thank Dr. Vijay, who is the secretary of APSI, and a special thanks to Dr. Manish Singhal and his team at Ames, uh, Delhi, for executing the idea of our president, Dr. Mahajan, sir, uh, regarding spreading of public awareness for plastic surgery through a film festival. I would also express our thanks to director of uh, Films and Television Institute of India for their help in selecting the uh, award-winning movies, and Mr. Shankar Bose, who's the creative head of Times Network, for his guidance in formulating the guidelines for the films. A big thank you to all the plastic surgeons and all the trainees for their enthusiasm and participation in such large numbers. And we'll always be eternally grateful to the real heroes who are actually our patients for sharing their struggles as well as their achievements, not only with us, but also with the public for a greater benefit. Lastly, I would like to thank CSOI for having given us the space to host the event and for projecting the films and delivering the talks for the public awareness. And it will be our constant endeavor to create awareness about burns, which is a major public health problem in our country. And it is events like this that would help us achieve this. I once again wholeheartedly thank one and all who have contributed to the success of this event and made this in, uh, day a wonderful and memorable one. Wishing you all a very good night. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sujata. With this, we come to the end of APSI Shushruta Film Festival and public lecture session. And it was a very fruitful evening. Uh, now I request the members of uh, Delhi chapter APSI to proceed to RV1 for the Delhi chapter meeting and those who are not members can proceed to party room 1 for dinner.
थैंक यू जय हिंद